Alright, welcome everybody to this Phoenix Ruin series, part one, where we build this awesome medieval ruin. So this is the final uh, kit assembly of, of the ruin, all the pieces. This is what you will end up making, it's the final result. But I just wanted to take you through the process of us building this, alright? So you can actually see here, if I go to Nanite, Triangles, you can actually see, so this is about 200 and something million polygons, right? Let's just go back to lit. And if we go through the process of how we got here, we actually create this blueprint over here. So we can go to level design. Um, and if we press play, this is where we start. This is the level design that we as environment artists get. So the design is this, and they're like, okay, make it look good. So you can see if I turn off the, where are we? Game mesh, and I turn on the level design, and I'll actually turn that off and that on. Okay, so, so this is kind of where we start. And then from here, we go and break this apart to figure out which pieces that we actually need. And we'll go through those um, scenes in Maya in a bit. So from here we go to the block mesh. So we have this and you can actually see how they very closely, but not perfectly overlap one another, right? And that that's kind of what happens quite often when you go and art up a level. Um, you can actually see here that the, the level design, which is this one, is, let me turn this off. You can actually see it's just slightly, you can even see here the bits are slightly off. And I did that on purpose because quite often during production, that's what happens. You get given something and you're like, eh, we need to make this kit, but it's kind of slightly kind of off really. Do you really need this level designer person? So we go through all that and we come up with all these kit pieces. So if you have a look here, we have this one. So we'll just take this for example. This is the window. We can bring this out like so. And I'll just snap this like that. Okay. And then after this, we go into Houdini and create this rough mesh. So we build all of these tools in order to create the rough mesh basic shapes of these, right? So if I bring this out, um, you can actually have a look here. We've got all these bits over here and all the kit pieces. Uh, so if I take this, you can even see that this snaps together so the geometry is perfectly tiling okay which is great that's what we want so we create all the tools to make that less of a headache so that you know even if you need to make big changes it's not it's, it's fairly trivial to like make these big changes but keep the seed of our tile right um, and then we also create blueprints so for instance this here is a blueprint where uh, we have these three asset pieces. So you can see if we go here uh, for this arch, uh, you know, if we go to the, so we're in the rough, if we go to the destroy and then we go to arch, we can actually just add another arch piece here. So it's like, okay, do you want that arch piece or do you want that arch piece? Like, you know, what do you like? So you have to create, you know, and even for the uh, back bits, so the exterior, you know, do you want that one? Or do you want that one? You know, doesn't matter. So, so we create all those systems, okay? And then from there, uh, we have our destroy RBD. In chapter four, we art direct our destruction by breaking apart uh, bits and pieces in the destruction uh, chapter. And then chapter five in the destroy RBD, we actually essentially take wrecking balls and just whack all these pieces in order to kind of create this, you know, worn look. So if we take this piece again and bring it out here, you can see that again, it's still tiles. Um, we can even take these pieces here and tile it on as well, because it, it all just works, right? And, and that's kind of like the power of all of this, right? So we can just move this over here like so. And then once we've finished this whole section, we move on to the surface damage. So if we go into here, and this is where we create uh, tools in Houdini to procedurally add this surface damage and 
the edge damage to everything. You can see all these nice bits, right? And we also do stuff with UVing. How do you UV something that's 8 million polygons um, efficiently? So we create tools in order to do that, right? So again, we can take this piece and bring it out here like so. Okay, like that. And we can do this like this. Right, so we got that. And then finally, when we do the texturing part, we can get rid of the surface damage and go into the game mesh. So this is where we do all our texturing and bring everything together to create this final asset. All right, so we can bring this in like so. All right, so this is the stages that we go through in making each of these assets. Generally during production, you wouldn't do like all of them, you know, in these explicit stages, right? You'd, you'd do this, something like this, and then something like this, maybe a hybrid, you know, you would make these and then destroy bits. And then from here, you would just do all of the surface damage and texturing as one. But because I wanted to go through the process and just be very explicit about what we're doing along the way to really understand all the bits and the repetition of doing it makes you really understand it, right? And that and that's kind of why we went down that road. When we made these materials, uh, we actually used Unreal's new material system, right? We used Substrate. Click on this one here and we go into here. All right, so, so we use Substrate, right? And I use that because that will eventually become Epic's new material system. Um, it's still in an experimental, but you know, just to future proof this. So if you haven't already, if you go to editor then you go to, I think it's editor preferences. And if we type in substrate, no, it's definitely in project settings. Why would it be in editor preferences? So if we type in here and we go substrate, uh, if you turn on substrate and then advanced visualizations, I didn't turn on this. I don't know why we don't really need it. Um, but if you turn that on, that'll, that'll be good. Okay, so when you get this project, you have access to all the files. If you go into the files directory, we have uh, a few things going on, right? We want to first talk about the Maya scene files. If we go inside of here, you can see that we have the Maya project. And if we go inside the scene and then level design, you get access to the level design user following along videos. And if you're following along, this is where we start at. If you are not interested in that, we have a second file called level design all pieces. So at the end of all the blocking out stuff, th this is the end of that chapter, the blocking chapter. We've got all of these pieces here that you can export out of Unreal. So you can just use that if you like. If you don't have access to Maya or you use another tool like Blender or Cinema 4D or 3D Studio Max or whatever, I've given the block mesh FBX assets. So if we open this, um, if we go inside, you can see there's the level design so this is that original level design geometry, as well as all the block mesh FBX assets. If you just want to immediately start in Unreal and the Houdini section. Okay, so if we have a look at the Phoenix Ruin series part one medieval ruin kit Houdini file, if you open it up, you will most likely come across this error. So what this means is all of the HDAs that we create, it can't find them. I've also had to rename them. So if we have a look in here, you can see that we have the Houdini HDAs. So if you double click on this, if you extract these files to your PC documents, Houdini 19.5, which is what I'm using, and the OTLS directory, and then open up Houdini, you'll still get this error because I've updated the names. So if we click OK, if we go Control B, this is the Houdini file where we create absolutely everything Houdini related for this project. Now let's just quickly go into this SM rough mesh church wall 500 AB, right? So if we go into here, this is, I think the first one that we make. And if we have a look, you can see that it has these, uh, we can select this. It has like these little yellow errors, like there is no HDA file, right? So I'm doing this because it's likely it might happen to you. You might not uh, paste things correctly, you know, whatever, like how do we solve this? Okay. So I'm going to turn this to auto update. And even if we select over here, you could just see it just doesn't work, right? So what we want to do is we want to go to Windows and then Asset Manager. And under Configuration, 
under asset definition toolbar, yours might be set to hide, so get it to show always. And what that means is that we can see this asset name and path up here. Okay, so if I click on this down here, you can see now because we pasted those files into the OTLS directory, if I click on this, that's changed and found the HDA. Okay, so again, if we go to this wall slab here, you know, if we click on this and we just do that, you can see that it's now working. And over here, if we click on this, you can see that there's actually an error on this one. So if I type in Boolean, uh, or we could just right click and go to the Phoenix Ruin series part one, we can just go Boolean object. Um, so then if I can just select that, click that in here, this into here and this into here, right? If I do this and I click activate, it's still kind of broken. It's not what we want. And again, if we look for this um, reference top, which is up here, you can see that there's an error over here, this poly extrude. And because it's trying to find the Boolean object reference top size, which if we actually go inside of here, it's this reference top size, but it's actually looking into this, which is non-existent. So what we actually want to do is, I mean, we can change this name to whatever we want, but if we go up to here, you can see that this is looking for Boolean underscore object ref underscore top size, but this is Boolean object one. So if we just rename this to Boolean object one, you can see now that it works and you know, this all works. So again, if we go to the brick cutter, we just go brick cutter here. And then here, go brick cutter. And then that works. And then here, brick offset. Brick offset, that works. Poly bevel and the exporter. And the that one there, geometry exporter, works. Okay? So you can like export it and do it. So that's, that's kind of that. So unfortunately, uh, if you want to use this, you know, for all of these, you'll have to do them, but maybe you'll only just use a few of them for reference. Um, sorry about that. And the second thing is because when we get down to the surface damage down here, a lot of these files, so if we like go to the, the entrance, I'm actually not gonna go into it because it gets quite big. But if we go to the surface entrance, you can see that this this gets this is like right at the end of the project where we start doing all of this processing of surface damage and everything. As we go down here, you can see that we're doing a geometry export there. We're doing a geometry export there. Um, we're doing more here, geometry exports, geometry exports, because um, this is a tool that we build. And the reason why we're doing this is because when we come out of these for loops, quite often the byproduct is like a five, you know, two to five million polygon file that can take anywhere from 30 seconds to one minute to process, right? So we wanna save them all. So that being said, if we come out to here and have a look at, you know, all of this, there's like 63 gigabytes worth of working files. So I just thought, you know, it's just more manageable for everybody. All right. And finally, uh, we use the side effects labs tools a lot in this project. So if you go to side effects over here, um, if you don't have this tab up here, you can just click on this and just go to shelves and just go to side effects labs and then just click on the update or install and you can install them and use them. And we go through all that. Finally, I wanna go through these two materials. So this T underscore grid texture. So we, we make this, we use them in the Maya and Unreal project. So if we go into Maya, in here, this is the actual grid material using a triplanar material. So if we have a look at this, you can just see as we move it around, you can see that the, the grid stays the same, but the geometry moves, all right? Uh, so if we have a look in here, we go to the grid, open shader effects. So you can see that this is the, the shader that we make. And I'm sure you can make that fairly easily in Blender or Cinema 4D. Uh, Next thing we want to have a look at is this actual project that you get. So this is the Unreal Engine project. So we start off, it's basic. I have this level, so open recent levels or just open level. So we want to go to the map hero. And inside here, all I've done is created this basic level with these 
kit pieces that I made. Uh, I've used some mega scan assets to give it some surface, but again, just like before, we have a triplanar grid material, and we also go and create the triplanar grid material with that texture grid. But I want to have a look at these videos. If we go inside here, you can see that I've broken this up into the individual chapters. And if we go inside blocking, for instance, in each of these chapters, we have a overview. So we go blocking, rough mesh, we have an overview of each of the chapters. And I've actually broken up the videos into chunks that are less than eight gigabytes. Some platforms can't have files larger than eight gigabytes. And if we go inside of them, you can see these are the first five videos. And I've broken them up into these parts because when I've bought courses and there were individual files, it got very overwhelming and time consuming to download it. So this would allow you to download a part, watch it, and then when you're done, you can either delete it or keep it and you're getting sizable chunks along the way. So that's everything. I hope you enjoy this project. It was really fun to make. We go through a lot of things and please share the results with me on Twitter. I'm at Sean Gobi and good luck.